um, shared some of them with Keisha the other day, and we got to laugh. And so let us celebrate a life well lived, and let's remember all the good. Um, before we begin, uh, just a, a, one more announcement, uh, a few more announcements. There is coffee, uh, as many of you know, and uh, some, some uh, things to eat uh, in the back room if, uh, if you are so inclined. Also, the family asked that if you wish to have the obituary sent to you that uh, in the signing book at the entrance, if you would kindly leave your address uh, and they will send it to you. But let us begin uh, our service this morning uh, with a song with His Eyes is on the Sparrow by a friend of the, will be sung by a friend of the family, Ruby Warner. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and alone for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches, I know he watches, I know he watches over me. Because I'm happy, I sing because I am free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. I Yea, though I walk 
through the shadow, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We now ask you to join us in prayer with an invocation, which will be given by Reverend Dr. E. Bain. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father God, this morning we want to give you praise and thanks. We're not going to be upstage here today. <laughs> Glory to God. This is Sandra's day. Amen. We're not going to be upstage by technology. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to give you praise and thanks today, oh God. As we stand at the parting of your dear daughter, Sandra, oh God, we declare today our Christian faith, and I stand today, oh God, in strength with this family. Almighty God, thou who gives us life, uh, and who gives life to man, and who receives him again in death, God, we thank you for thy abiding presence. And for the grace that you give us today, God, through Jesus Christ to withstand this storm that has come against us. In our frailty, O oh God, we look to you. In our strength, O oh God, we look to you. And in our sorrow, O oh God, this family looks to you for comfort. Help us in this hour, O oh God, to put our trust in you, that we may receive, O oh God, light and understanding, even when we are perplexed about why things have happened the way that they have. O oh God, we ask you for strength. We ask that light will shine, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you will illumine our minds, O oh God, and that you would open the eyes of our understanding, O oh God, for this new experience that we are going through because it was one Sandra, O oh God, and today she's not here with us on this side of eternity. God, we thank you for your grace unto an eternal hope through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. And we say amen. 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 Now we invite Christy Savory up to the podium for a second scripture reading. Friends and family, uh, I thought this was going to be easy. Sandra tried to make it easy by not having having any a coffin here today in an open casket. But it, it's it's not easy. But I just want to I just want to say to you what Sandra meant to me. She was. One of my favorite cousins, Galen, Sandra, everything comes in two. <laughs> so Sandra doesn't go without Galen. And Gail, today I know you lose a big part, half of you. Why are you? And it was so funny when, when I got the call back in Toronto, Toronto on Wednesday, I says, I am not going to miss this. Sandra is my favorite cousin. And I love her so much. And 
I made the arrangement so quickly that I booked to go back this morning. And I was going to go back this morning and miss this, this amazing celebration of a life. And, and I haven't seen Sandra Little Brother, which is my cousin, my favorite cousin growing up playing back in Trinidad. Ricky, I haven't seen Ricky since 1970. <laughs> and Ricky said, he's basically saying to me, you can't go back until, you know, the service is over. And I'm glad. And what happened, I tried to arrange before to change my ticket so that I can be here at the service. And they want to charge me an arm and a leg. So this morning, because of Ricky persistence and, and giving me that information, I called back the airline and this. They just charged me an arm, so I was able to come here and walk with my leg. <laughs> so, I just want to thank you, Ricky, for your persistence and your love, my brother. I'm going to read from Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything, there is a time to be born, there is a time to die. There is a time to plant, and a time to harvest, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to destroy, and a time to rebuild, a time to cry, and a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to... I can't see. A time to grieve, and a time to... Excuse me. A time for scattering stones, and a time for gathering the stones. A time to hug, and a time not to hug. A time to find, and a time to lose. A time for keeping, and a time for throwing away. A time to eat, and a time to repair. A time to, to be quiet, and a time to speak up. A time for loving, and a time for war. Time for peace. What does one really get from hard work? I have thought almost, I have thought about this, I have thought about this in connection with the various kinds of work God has given. For mankind, everything is appropriate in its own time. But though God has planted eternity in the hearts of men, even when or man cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So, so I conclude this first. There is nothing better for man than to be happy and to enjoy himself as long as he can. And it seems that he should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of his labor. For these are the gift of God. Thank you. Christy, we're glad that you changed your reservation, too, and you only had to give up the arm. <laughs> um, um, and, and, and just in the spirit of, of what Christy has shared, uh, we will have uh, an opportunity for remarks at the very end, and I'll be encouraging everybody to share something with the family. Um, and with that, uh, Kevin, I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Um, Kevin Andrews. Hendrickson. 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 Oh, I'm Hendrickson. sorry. Hendrickson. I'm sorry, Shirley Andrews. I'm... <laughs> Listen, folks, I got wrapped into this this morning, and this is an emotional time. Um, made a promise that he's going to keep, and we love him for that. So today, Kevin, on his beautiful saxophone, will be playing How Great Thou Art for Sandra. <laughs>
third and final scripture reading, we will invite Brian Savory up to the podium. <laughs> Scripture coming from uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 to 13 it says for I know the thoughts that I have towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope then you will call upon my call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And now words about her beloved mother, Nicole Davis. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you for for being so or organized at the last minute and saying those beautiful words about her and and thank you everyone for attending she would have been overwhelmed by um, the, the faces today and everyone who traveled from far and and um, and near and and offered food and love and drinks and uh, she would have been so overwhelmed in the celebration of her life, and and um, it's just overwhelming. And I, I want to thank you guys from from the family. Um, it, it just it's overwhelming is the word I want to say. Um, today we celebrate the life of Sandra Reyes. She was born on October 19, 1951, in Arima, Trinidad to Rayma Lake and Oscar Savory, who are both deceased. She attended Arima Girls Government School and subsequently Arima Modern Secondary. In the early 60s, Sandra migrated to New York City where she pursued a career as an executive secretary. After studying and working in New York for 20 years, she moved to Florida to continue her dream. And also, it's much warmer down here. <laughs> <laughs> Years after, in Miami Lakes, she met her work family at Beck Velada and Company. She worked with them as an administrative assistant for 18 years and grew especially close to her co-workers, Pat and Gordon. She talked about them like they were her sisters. She also used to say to them, yo nada mas que trabajo aquí, which means I only work here. <laughs> so that was her famous saying. Um, she had a little bird that she programmed to say it when she was ready. <laughs> um, she was the life of, of any party that she attended. Everywhere she went, people took a liking to her. Sandra was a carnival person and knew every calypso, every soca. She listened to it morning, noon, and night. She would sing them so much that her grandchildren knew all the words whenever they, whenever they visited their nana. <laughs> if you heard loud calypso music coming from a car outside, most likely it was her. <laughs> she also enjoyed mango so much that we called her Mango Mouth. One of the things that on her bucket list was to go to Trinidad every mango season. She almost did that. She was a genuine and loving and trustworthy person, and she was one of the strongest people we know. She had handled single parenting and financial hardships with an ease and a smile on her face, and you wouldn't even know that she was going through anything. In the end, she was affected by a very aggressive cancer, and she tried her best to fight it. The last time she saw many of her loved ones, including her office family, was a couple of weeks ago. Um, that was one of the last time we truly saw the sparkle in her eyes as she enjoyed the steel pen that was um, especially there for her. And her son took, took the time to, to plan a beautiful party and she enjoyed it thoroughly. So. On October 16, three days before her 16th, 67th birthday, Sandra went silently in her sleep with her 
close family at her side. Feeling the love and the strength that always radiated. We will miss her laughter and boy did she have a laugh. <laughs> Um, to know her was to love her in your own special way. She was a no-nonsense person and was not shy about speaking her mind. And no one was considered a stranger to her as all were welcomed and all felt her love. Sandra would be greatly missed by her children, Wesley Sr. and myself, Nicole, daughter-in-law, Jessica, and her grandchildren, Adam, Wesley Jr., Kaylee, Evan, Kirsten and her great granddaughter Zoe and her granddaughter in law Grayson. She was especially close to her sister Gail and her brothers Oscar Jr., Larry, Brian, which we also call Ricky, her sisters in law Michelle, Joyce, and her ex sister in law Juanita. Um, she was like a second mother to her nieces. Keisha, Danielle, Elena, Giselle, Shanoa, Cheyenne, and her nephews, Brian, Eric, Uriah, Aaron, Tyree, Javier, Taekwon, and Deed. She was also close to their children and her cousins, the Mayungs, the Hearts, and the Savries, along with many, many other extended family and friends. To know her was to, to love her and to feel love from her. I'm, I apologize that I didn't know that this uh, obituary wasn't going to be presented in a pamphlet. I didn't find out until today. But um, it is supposed to be on the website, and also if you need us to send it to you, you can leave your contact information outside and we'll send it. And thanks again, everyone. We have come to the part of our uh, service for remarks, personal remarks. Now, um, this is always that time when you sit out there and you think to yourself of all the great things and all the great memories, or maybe you don't have the courage to get up here and say it. Now, I'm going to encourage you to say, come up here. Let's tell a great story about Sandra. Tell us about the memories. And if you think about why it's important, is because we've all spent time with her in our own way, in ways that maybe the family doesn't know. And you may have a memory mm -hmm. to share that will make them smile today, that they will carry forth with them from today. So don't be hesitant to share your story. And I'll start it off <laughs> with the story Keisha and I uh, were sharing the, uh, a few days ago. So several years ago, um, Gail and Keisha invited me to go on a cruise. Sandra went along, <laughs> and of course, we had a lot of fun. Some we can't say, because there's some young years in the room. <laughs> and one late night, I think it was the last night of our journey, uh, we went up to the top deck with the stars shining, and of course the music came on. And Keisha, the song's Wine, Dollar Dollar Bill, Dollar right? Wine. Dollar wine? Okay. <laughs> so, okay, you can all can look at me. No, I don't know how to dance to that song, right? Exactly. So, there she was, top deck. She showed me how, how to do the dance. And I tried my best and made a little fool of myself, but I had a good time because it was all smiles and laughter. And at the very end, she came over and she put her arm around me. She goes, good job, Yvonne. But... You're never going to make it a carnival. <laughs> they will eat you alive. <laughs> so we'll just send you pictures. <laughs> so every time I hear that song on the radio or, I, or I, I, I think about going on a cruise, that's my, always my number one memory. Because um, I learned to dance, which I have used since then. Um, and I've improved a little bit. But I will always remember her laughing at me, with me, um, and how great of a time we had. So I now invite uh, you all up uh, to share a memory, to share a feeling, uh, something that we all can share and celebrate her wonderful life. So please join us. <laughs> You know, 
moms had a way with um, putting me at ease with anything. Mm -hmm. She's literally a goddess. And I always hear her voice echoing. It's okay, sweetie. <laughs> it's okay. No matter what, just from a kid. Mm -hmm. I got hurt. Wesley put me in a wolf. Mm -hmm. hurt me. <laughs> she would always be someone to put me at ease. Mm -hmm. And I'll never, <clears throat> ever forget my mom. Mm -hmm. She's my aunt. I know that. You know, she's not my mom, but she might as well, just like a lot of people in this room. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she wouldn't want us to have sad faces. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've ever seen her with a sad face ever. Mm -hmm. um, so always, whenever you have a moment where it's going hard, it's, mm -hmm. Remember those words, because mm -hmm. that's kind of like a go-to phrase. <laughs> so, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I love all of you. Mm -hmm. I love mom. Most of you guys are, are related to each other. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would admit that mm -hmm. I don't even have any kids now. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure I look like somebody. Some of you know. But uh, you know, my point is, uh, people's the legacy of someone is your children. Mm -hmm. You can be good to your coworkers. You can be good to family. But I am almost a complete stranger mm -hmm. because my my interaction with Nikki is brief, mm -hmm. but however, she's family. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because she's not related to me. I have people that are related to me. I'm not trading Nikki for some of them. I met Nikki's mom personally, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there talking to somebody that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> my brother uh, said, we have to go. But I think Probably when you go up with somebody when you're in your thirties. And I'm telling you, Nikki's mom looks amazing. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> and I think for one second my brother said, he's not gonna be my father in law. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the grace that they have exhibited to us because as I mentioned to you guys, I don't have Nikki's number. However, the compassion, the class she has shown us, I believe is something that you don't find at Walmart. It has to come from somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to credit her mom because this is the person I've interacted mm -hmm. in her life. This is the person that's around her kids. This is the person that I've, that I've seen one time. And it left the impression for me, even if I was anywhere else, I wouldn't miss it. Mm -hmm. I lost my daddy in June. She was there too. Mm -hmm. We are family. I don't have to have the same DNA. But if we have the same values, mm -hmm. compassion, my nieces slept on her house. My uncles into her house and barbecues. Mm -hmm. And the one good thing I'm grateful for, if it wasn't for this woman, mm -hmm. me and my brother would have a relationship. Mm -hmm. She's the bond that has kept us together. Because me and him, as much as we look like, we are complete opposites apart. Mm -hmm. So she's the one that gave a home where I can take my mother and find a good excuse to keep my family together. So. In case you guys are wondering, it's not just Nikki's mom, but also if she managed to raise such a great human being. To me, this is the best accomplishment in life. And thank you for being a family member. My name is Michelle Savory. I'm Brian's wife. Mm -hmm. I met Sandra about four years ago. I'm not from Trinidad. <laughs> <laughs> so the foods are different. 
<laughs> than what I eat. Mm -hmm. And so Sandra told me I needed to try some Kalalu. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's her specialty. <laughs> and I realized Sandra was the key. She and Gail were the key to get in good. <laughs> so Nikki made some roti and everything. And Sandra said, try the Galilee. And so I said, okay. <laughs> so I slop up a whole bunch and eat it, all of it. Did you like it? No, I didn't, son. <laughs> That's okay, sweetie. <laughs> you will like it. <laughs> and that's how I met Sandra. But I knew that because I ate that, I was in good. Hi, um, I worked with Sandra for 15 years, a little bit more, or a little bit less, probably <laughs> closer to more. And just to give you an idea of what her days were like when you guys weren't around, we did work. <laughs> <laughs> Brother-in-law, our boss is sitting there, so we'll say we did work. We sometimes had Disco Fridays. <laughs> she would play Shesha La Farm for me. We would play um, Tavares, Heaven Must Be Missing an Angel. <laughs> we did the bump for a minute or two. <laughs> we laughed a lot. We laughed, I mean, my sister can tell you that sometimes we'd run to the bathroom together <laughs> and split up, and all you would hear through the walls is us wah, 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 laughing because we couldn't stop. We couldn't stop. We couldn't even look at each other. I would tell you, don't look at me, Vega. <laughs> and she would call me Vega. And uh, I remember my father taught her how he used to call her J-Lo, and I won't explain why. <laughs> but he would walk in and sometimes she'd be dancing and he just, he loved her. Mm -hmm. And she loved him. Mm -hmm. And, sorry, Sandra was family, mm -hmm. through and through. She was cool, I could talk to her about anything. I bugged her to Oh, my sister would say, give her mercy, because I wouldn't stop all day long, all day long. Sometimes uh, somebody would call, and she was so nice with all these salesmen. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, Reyes, come on. And once in a blue moon, she would be mean. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> her mean was that she would say, we're not interested. And she would answer. <laughs> so I had to make her feel like, because she was... She was the person we all strive to be, and very few of us me. And it was my honor to work with your mother, really. She loved all of you. She spoke about her family. I mean, I know her cat. <laughs> I didn't know her name till two weeks ago. <laughs> you know, the, the Labrador, Eva, you know, I know we're connected. Her, her dachshund. Her dachshund is now with my best friends, uh -huh. her, the children. <laughs> so I called them today. But uh, she was really exceptional. And, and I can't say that about many people. Mm -hmm. She was wonderful to work with. She made everything fantastic. I, as her friend, and as what I consider her extended family for my family and for everyone that worked with her, I will miss her every day. And it's hard to go to work and not see her smiling and laughing. And uh, I'll leave you with one funny story to put away the, everyone that knows me knows I am petrified of reptiles. And one day your mom, Went to Ruby Tuesday. She loved Ruby Tuesdays on Tuesday, out back on Wednesday. She was a good eater. <laughs> El Novillo until they went a little downhill. I would come into town. They ate all week out because she loved it. 
And she calls me, she says, Gourds. She used to call me Gourds or Vega or whatever she came up with. Gourds, come outside. And I go outside and there is an iguana this big on her side, on top of her, on the hood, uh -huh. right? And I go outside and I go, whoa, well, what? And when I see this big green thing, she is laughing hysterically. <laughs> and she lowers the window, which I would have never done this much. And she goes, Gorge, look what's on my car. I go, when did that go? She goes, oh, when I, before I drove to Ruby. So she went to Ruby Tuesday with the iguana <laughs> and the tail. So then I'm hysterical. So she calls my sister that's not scared of iguanas. So we're all three 